What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Game Show. My name is AJ Gels. How y'all doing? I am finally sitting down and taking a look at the Square Enix uh, press conference from E3. I know E3 is over. You know, I should have finished this up long ago. But there's just something about this conference that I've just not wanted to sit down and do. Mostly because I found E3 this year to be wildly depressing. Um, other than Nintendo. I thought Nintendo absolutely killed it. Um, you know, I enjoyed Nintendo's... Not only the Nintendo Direct, but I already did a video on um, Fire Emblem Three Houses. I thought that looked really cool. Uh, I'm still planning on taking a look at a lot of the other Nintendo stuff that they showed, uh, as well as some other stuff. Oh, God, I still haven't even taken a look at what E3 showed, but or EA showed. But in all honesty, if uh, if, if nobody... I don't know. I'm, I'm still not even sure if there was anything worth showing from that, from what I've heard about it. Either way, this is about uh, Square Enix. I'm trying to think. I, I know that... Final Fantasy VII is shown. Uh, I know they're doing something with Crystal Dynamics and the Avengers. Other than that, I, I really don't know what uh, what else uh, shown here. I've really kind of been avoiding this one, um, just uh, for the surprise. And then I just kept uh, putting it off, putting it off. And here it is, Sunday night, and I still haven't done the done this conference. So uh, those two games, I I know are going to be shown. I, I get a feeling that we're going to see some um, Dying Light two because I I think Square is said. Um, I read an article that said that game was being brought to, um, brought to E3 from Square uh, by Square Enix. So it wouldn't surprise me to see um, a more extended look than I think what we saw at the Microsoft conference here. But uh, either way, let's let's get into this. God, man, another tiny ass. I I, I get it because this is gonna be a, this is a smaller conference. But, I mean, Ubisoft looked tiny. Microsoft, the crowd reaction wasn't that big. Um, I just, uh, Bethesda's was in a tiny studio as well. I, I just, I, I thought that E3 this year, I mean, like I said, not only was it, um, I thought boring. I, in all honesty, I think the crowds were tiny. You know, I, I can't figure out why I don't have, why I'm massively excited like so many people are for this game. And and, and I, re I really think the, the, the reason for it is, I, I keep trying to figure it out, I think the reason for it is, I do not have that youthful connection with Final Fantasy VII that a lot of people do. To, to me, Final Fantasy VII is just a Final Fantasy game. My, my first real Final Fantasy game that I played was twelve. And then um, ten is my favorite. In all honesty, I like the more turn-based sort of action games. And welcome, Yoshinori Kitase, producer, Final Fantasy VII Remake. And everything that I can, I've seen in this game shows that it's going to be, it's going to still be more of a more of an action title than anything else. It just kind of makes me sit there and go, eh. I'm very happy to be able to introduce this long beloved title once again. After 22 years, the familiar characters we love have returned while becoming more beautiful and captivating than ever before. I mean, it also it reminds me so much of. Of what fucking game was it? It was set in the same world as Seven, or set at the same time. Um, was it Crisis Core? It was on the PSP. It was an action game that just had the Final Fantasy brand on it. That to me just never felt like a Final Fantasy game. I, I remember it back on the PSP. I cannot remember what the hell the name was. I want to say it was Crisis Core, but either way, 
that's just the vibe I'm getting out of this. I, I'm trying to get excited like so many other people. I mean, the game looks sweet. I'm going to play it. I'll probably enjoy it. Um, I, I don't know. I just can't muster that excitement that everyone else has been having for this game. To our long-time fans, we thank you for your support and patience over these years, and we look forward to embarking on this journey together. え、Remaking Final Fantasy VII has allowed us to dive much deeper into the world and its characters than ever before. The game design was optimized for this title as well, and we anticipate two Blu-ray discs worth of gameplay content. <laughs> the first game in this project expands on the story of Midgar and is such an elaborate retelling that it has become a solid standalone game in its own right. え、これからご紹介する映像及びゲームプレイで、ま、ファンの方のえ、期待を決して裏切らない皆さん、あの皆さんのね、あのよく知っているあのFF7に再開できることとなります。Through the content we are about to unveil today and through all that we have yet to unveil, we will not disappoint your expectations. Your reunion with the Final Fantasy 7 you know is near. え、ま、それと同時にですね、当時を知らないゲームファンの方は、え、また新しいね、ファイナルファンタジーと出会うことになります。To newcomers who never played the original, uh, we present to you a completely new Final Fantasy and a perfect starting point to explore the world of Final Fantasy 7. Please welcome Neil Pabone, Senior Manager, Product Marketing, Square Enix. You know, I it... Part of me kind of wishes they would have done something like a direct here or what they did last year. So again, like have this guy on the screen and have him have the voiceover, kind of like um, what Nintendo was doing, where they had the English voiceover on top of the Japanese, just because this live thing where he's just doing this whole sentence and then the translation, it just drags. I know, again, yes, I know, I'm, I'm pausing and it makes it longer, but it just, it, it pulls things, it, it just, it just pulls things back at such a slow speed. I don't know, it just, it, it's something, it's something about that bothers me, and maybe, eh, Kojima never bothered me when he did that, maybe, uh, mostly because I think Kojima kept things short and sweet, and always kind of, um, a, a, kind of opaque, well, this is it, well. This to me just feels like I, 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 I don't know. You could have, you could have put that on a, on a in, in a video clip or something like. Again, just done this more as a direct instead of an actual live conference, and just sped it up a little bit more. So Neil is here to introduce you and walk you through gameplay. Thank you, Katashi-san. All right, everyone. Let's mosey. <laughs> Final Fantasy VII Remake features a hybrid gameplay system that merges real-time action with strategic command-based combat. For starters, each press of the square button is a swing of Cloud's Buster Sword. Cloud attacks, dodges, and blocks all in real time. His standard attacks do some damage, but they barely scratch the surface of Cloud's true potential. Succeeding on the battlefield requires much more than just hacking and slashing. Cloud needs to be tactical. He needs ATB. Two ATB bars are displayed in the lower right. These fill up slowly over time, but fill much faster as Cloud lands standard attacks. Once an ATB bar is full, you can enter tactical mode, where time slows to a crawl and you have the opportunity to choose actions from the com command menu. Katasi-san, I've had the pleasure of seeing quite a bit of the game, but tactical mode never gets old for me. I could just sit here all day long and watch this beautiful slow-motion action. あの、観客の皆さんはね、おそらくね、他の部分ももう少し見たいのではないかと思いますが、皆さんいかがでしょう? 
I think the audience would like to see more. Isn't that right, everyone? Yeah. Fair enough. Good point, good point. <laughs> yeah. Well, once in tactical mode, you can choose to perform various abilities, such as Cloud's Braver attack. Using an item in battle will deplete an ATB charge, and if Cloud has the right materia equipped and enough MP, he can use ATB charges to cast spells. Of course, this being a remake, we're sure to see some familiar faces. With the use of his iconic gun arm, Barrett is able to target enemies at a distance. Barrett's standard attacks generate ATB charges similar to Cloud, but his abilities are entirely different. Switching between characters in combat is done with a single button press, which makes rotating through party members a snap. Speaking of other party members, Katasi-san, when are we going to see Tifa in action? Maybe, maybe soon. Soon. All right. Characters will continue to fight even when... See, it's weird to me that your ATB bar is consumed while you're using spells, especially when you have an MP bar. But I, just this... this to me, this looks like, um, I don't know. I mean, this looks like a, just a slightly modified version of what, um, they, what they did in, uh, Final Fantasy 15, just maybe a little slower. I mean, I, I, I'm just sitting here looking at this going again. I'm just sitting here looking at it going, meh, I just, I, there, there's something to me. There's something that has been removed from Final Fantasy it, it, since it's focused on being this more action style, I, it, it's become more of a hack and slash game to me. Not saying I don't, I dislike it. I actually, I really like Final Fantasy 15. I had a whole lot of fun about this game. So maybe I'm, maybe this is just something that I'm, I'm looking at now, and I'm just like, this looks like a pain in the ass, and will actually be a lot more fun when I actually play it. Again, a lot more like Final Fantasy 15. But there's just some again. It's just looking at this. I just feel like it loses something compared to that old turn based style. I, I just, I love, it may, it, it, maybe it's because I'm a giant nerd, I love turn-based games, still love, uh, you know, it, games like Persona, just, I absolutely love them, and there's just, I, just something about this that just feels lacking. When you're not controlling them directly, but it's up to you to choose how and when ATB charges are used. You can maximize your effectiveness by switching between characters, or issuing commands to characters with full ATB bars. Every enemy has a focus gauge that fills up as you do damage. When the gauge is full, the enemy becomes staggered, and you'll deal bonus damage. Tactical mode evokes the command selections from the original Final Fantasy VII and allows players to enjoy battle while taking the time to think strategically. For players who prefer fast-paced action, abilities and spells can be bound to shortcuts for immediate execution. Shortcuts make combat extremely dynamic, but the choice of using them is entirely up to you. Right, Katase-san? That's right. The game has been made so that you can choose how to play. I hope players get excited about this. Well, that's a brief introduction to combat in Final Fantasy VII Remake, and we look forward to showing you a whole lot more in the coming months. For now, let's see how Cloud and Barrett do against a more formidable foe. And you can find out more when the game releases in 2023. Yes, that's a joke. Well, I mean, you're an action game. You, uh, swing a sword at it. It's on you. Guess it's my turn. Thought you were the expert. 
So what's your brilliant plan, genius? See, this action-based party system, I, I, a lot of games, a, a, a lot of JRPGs, I, I think, have tried a system like this. I've just never played one that's never that's ever felt. That's uh, just never felt right to me. And again, maybe, maybe again, maybe it's I'm just so hung up on. Uh, maybe it's just that I am so hung up on turn-based games. You know, again, there's a reason Persona is still my my go-to when it comes to JRPGs. But I don't know. I just I feel that it lacks something. It's it, it, it's trying to still be that that kind of strategic RPG while at the same time being fast-paced and actiony and being like a Devil May Cry. You know, my. I, I almost wish they would have picked one that if they would have wanted this to be an action game, gone all out, made it an action game. I mean, I'm curious to see what the uh, you know the actual um. What was I saying? Um, I I am curious to see how the actual um RPG mechanics of this game play out. Alrighty then. Um, sorry if you noticed a cut there. I think my... I don't know what the hell happened. I don't know what was going on there. My computer froze or something. Like I was I was waiting for it to like forcibly restart or crash or... What? I got no idea. joining us, Namura-san. It is an absolute honor to have you here. Katase-san, how do you feel working with Namura-san once again on Final Fantasy VII Remake? はい、あの、彼とはですね、原作のFF7以降、ま、何作もね、一緒にね、あの、その後も仕事はしてるんですけども、ま、今作のね、2つにね、あの、ディレクションってキャラクターデザイナーそしてね、ストーリーとね、が
、はい、野村さんコメントどうぞ。はい。えー、今まであの。Am I the only one who thinks that the、um, <laughs> that the translator seems to be kind of PO'd? It just seems like she'd much rather be doing anything other than this. I mean, probably just concentrating or whatever, but still, it just it always makes me laugh when you see a see the translator just going, I just I don't want to be here. <laughs> So, first and foremost,、uh, we wanted to extend our gratitude to those who have been waiting so patiently and have been supporting us for such a long time until now. And also,、um, we've taken a look at gameplay right now and we fairly showed you、um, a good bit. So, we wanted to extend our gratitude to those who have been waiting so patiently. And I was wondering, do you guys want to actually play the game? y o u gonna give us a real release date? ということでですね、<笑>えー、明日から開催されます E3 のですね、スクエニックスブースの方で、えー、セブンリメイク、えー、プレイアブル出展していますので、ぜひ機会のある方は、えー、触れてみてください。So, we actually have playable demo kiosks available at the Square Enix E3 booth. So, I hope you have the opportunity to try it out. So, we have the opportunity to try it out. So, we have the opportunity to try it out. コンサートの方でショート版のトレーラーを公開しましたけれども、今日はあのロング版をご用意してますので、ぜひご覧ください。So finally, there is something that we wanted to show you.、Um, yesterday we showed you a short version of a trailer at the Final Fantasy VII concert. But today, today we have a longer version.、はい、それではお願いします。All right, please take a look. Oh, interesting. See, that's the stuff that I'm most interested in. Like, they're just walking around. Sorry, just, just walking around the world, interacting with、uh, people in RPGs. I think. To me, that's almost more important than the actual combat and the actual、uh, gameplay of an RPG. I, I, I know that's really weird, but、uh, to me, I think part of, part of an r p if I can form a sentence, part of what makes RPGs great is interacting with the world and experiencing the world.、Uh, and, and that can't be done without a really fun game world to interact with. Picture here. Nothing worth fighting for was ever won without sacrifice. Help me! <laughs> Have you been a good girl? I mean, I, I, kn I knew, I knew that、uh, Aerith had a massive following. I heard you having second thoughts. I know we have to think big if we're going to make a difference. But not like this. Holy crap, they actually made liquid in a glass look like liquid in a glass in this game. You don't see that a lot. I'm, like, like I was saying, I, I know that Aerith had a massive、uh, fandom. I didn't know that Tifa's was that,、um, that big.
You're not real. You're a clown. I have a favor to ask of you. Run away. You have to leave. You have to live. You bastard! Yeah! Hold on to that hatred. See, there's there's one scene that I, I that I'm actually really dying to see. Okay, wow. That's a lot sooner than I thought. Um what, what was I saying? Um oh, holy shit, that is a dope steel bookcase. All right, well, I'm getting uh I'm I'm getting this um I'm getting the deluxe edition. Uh, you can you can sell me on a, on a special edition just with a with a really cool steel bookcase and this one's freaking awesome. I love the art. Um, uh, you know, uh, honestly, of all the characters in Final Fantasy VII that you know I think are are really cool, Sephiroth has always always uh, grabbed me. Maybe maybe it's because he he was in Kingdom Hearts and I played that more than Final Fantasy VII. Maybe it's because I love the um, you know the big ass katana. Maybe it's I just I, I, I like the bad guy thing. But there's something really cool about Sephiroth, Sephiroth to me. Um, but no, what I was saying is, there's one scene that I really want to see how they do it in Final Fantasy VII, and that's probably the biggest scene from Final Fantasy VII. I don't feel like I'm spoiling anything because this game, because the original was out way long ago, and I'm sure every every gamer should know what happens to Aerith. It's that scene where Sephiroth kills her. Um, I, I'm really curious. Are, are they going to do that just as a newly rendered scene? Are they going to change that scene up? How it happens? Um, everything. I'm just. I really want to see that death scene um, in the new engine. I, I'm really curious to see how they do it. If they still have that uh, that shot of Aerith praying, and then boom, that uh, the katana going like right through her chest. If they're still going to do that, uh, do it from that same angle, or do it a little differently. I don't know. But uh, I'm I'm really interested in that. I know it's weird. It's yeah. I want to see a, a super popular character die. But no, I I, I think that would, be, that would be really cool. Um. In the in the new in the new engine, I, I really want to see it. It just it just to experience one of those just one of the most powerful moments in video games again is what I'm trying to get at. Oh, that's cool. Oh, okay. The game that I haven't given up on, I just... I keep trying to get into a groove with it and play it, and just... There's something about it that's not connecting me. Recently, I don't know. I know what happened with you guys in Seattle. How do you feel with us misfits? Come on! <laughs> yeah! Ready when you are, young master. Oh my god, this is so exciting. Oh my gosh. I love the setting, it's so beautiful, man. Time to hit the road. It'll be fine, Daniel. As long as we're together. I want to see what his power can do. Come on, Daniel. You got this. It's hard to be able to control his powers. Oh, no. No, oh, I shouldn't do this. Stop it. You're crazy. On the ground. Now. Whoa. You guys should have known that was coming. Did you not see any of the trailers leading up to this game? That Oh, they, they shot their dad. Glad I got to meet you. It's the same for me. Ah, uh, bro hug. What a nice dude, man. Yes, I get it. These guys, I'm willing to bet, are more, um... I don't know. I, I'm not going to say that stuff's scripted, because I've not seen these actual videos that these are from, but that's just the vibe I get. Do it, Daniel! No! Oh, this oh is going to be the cliffhanger. Stop, Daniel. I said stop. Don't grab me. That was so intense. It's my power, not yours. What the? No, that's the ending, isn't it? 
This game is awesome. What, I think episode four is in August? At least I, I think episode four is coming out in August. I still need to finish two episodes two and three. It's just, I don't know, man. I'm trying. I just can't get into it. Crystals keep the deadly miasma in check, but the crystal's power is not eternal. These are the chronicles of brave young adventurers who journey to protect their home. These are the Crystal Chronicles. If we had no crystals, miasma would consume us all, correct? Never did I imagine that it could be so bright. In online multiplayer mode, caravan with friends wherever they may be. The adventure close at hand. The journey now unfolds on smartphones. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition. This winter, embark on a new journey. Once. Meh. The journey begins. Y you know, I I've not played this game yet. This should be fun. I'm I'm told from people that I would absolutely love it. Um, yeah, I've just, I, I've never, I've just never had the spare cash to pick it up. You know, now seeing what they're doing with this conference, I feel that they could have done this as just a direct style video. They didn't need to have to, to you know, rent out the, oh, cool. Sorry, I, I, I really like this game. Um, that they didn't need to do this in a, um, words are hard, um, in, in an actual, um, auditorium or whatever. I don't know why auditorium is hard to find that word. No, I, I really like this game. That's right! I forgot they were remastering The Last Remnant. I mean, it, it's got a really weird... Really? That's cool. Uh, it, it, it's got it's got a really weird um, combat system that I that I think a lot of that really didn't grab a lot of people. But I'm I'm I, I own it on PC. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll get it on Switch and I'll play it again. It's a real. It's a. It's kind of a weird game. It's the one, the only, the builders, builder of the game. It's Dragon Quest Builders Two. The children of Hargon, the vile cult that worships destruction, has outlawed the building, cooking, and creation of all things, and captured the builders. All hope seems to be lost until you, a young apprentice builder, manages to escape the clutches of evil. Washed up on the deserted shores of the Isle of Awakening, and with the help of your spirited and mysterious companion, Malroth, it is up to you to doff your mallet and club, unravel the riddles of this land, and defeat the hateful children of Harkon. Basically, you mean play Minecraft Dragon Quest Edition. Discover your true potential as a master builder. There is a land of adventure with many islands offering unlimited building combinations. You will have to master new crafting skills on each island. I, I knew so many people loved this game. I just I, It just did not appeal to me. I, just like Minecraft never appealed to me. Build huge 
huge structures in a larger world with more variety and options than ever before. And with a little help from the eager islanders. The world is humongous, and you'll need your wits about you to get around. Run across open fields and explore ruins, treacherous mines, and spectacular castles. Dive into the watery depths to discover hidden treasures. Climb the highest mountains to catch the sunset. And glide home to rest up for your next day of adventure. But beware. Monsters roam this land and will need to be dispatched with cunning composure. Luckily, accompanying you on your quest is the enigmatic Malroth, an aggressive amnesiac with a fondness for fighting foes. Why is it always an amnesiac? Can, can we have a JRPG once where a character doesn't have amnesia? And just, just one character, come on. Seeds and raise a multitude of crops. Yes, I know there's tons of them that don't have amnesia. I'm just saying, it's just it seems like it's a really overused concept. Concept. From the humble cabbage and wheat to the humble cabbage. Big projects require big, big help. You and three friends can team up online to build anything you can imagine. Let your creativity run wild! See, maybe because I don't have that is why this stuff is never why this game has never appealed to me. The road you build is paved with peril, young builder. Only you can defeat the children of Hargon. Bring an end to destruction and save the world in Dragon Quest Builders 2! Meh. I, don't, I, I feel like everything past Final Fantasy 7 at this has been really just kind of meh. Okay, we already saw this. We saw this at the uh, at the at the Nintendo conference, or at the direct. Well, I guess the direct was after this. So let me let me apologize. The direct was actually after this conference, so I guess I have to give them some credit for that. Let's do this. I believe in you. I believe in the luminary. Honestly, I'd drop I'd drop another sixty bucks into this game on Switch. This game was really fun. Do not give his heart. Do not look back. Remember, you're the luminary. We believe in you. Yeah, I I, I really like Dragon Quest Eleven. It was a lot of fun. I, I honestly not heard of some of these ti I heard about this one. I heard about Fear Effect. The rest of these I've not heard of. Wait, I think I've heard of Forgotten And. Forgotten And. Words are hard. Oh, yeah. I heard of Italian. I like this music. 
Alberto. Juan Carlos Mastreta. We're a family of motorsport fans from Mexico, and we're the founders of Original Fire Games. Over the last few decades, we have seen a fascinating evolution in racing games. And nowadays, you can drive almost any type of car on amazing recreations of the best tracks in the world. However, we believe it's time to try something different. We want to do this by reviving a style that pioneered racing games decades ago. Our game mixes top-down racing with a classic, sharp, arcade look and tactile driving physics which brings together a whole range of styles and eras of motorsport. We are Interesting. And show a sneak preview of our game, which Square Enix Collective will publish in 2020. Join us for the ride and see you again soon. Okay. I mean, interesting. I don't know. Depending on the price, I might have given it a shot. I, I don't know. Battalion 1944 recaptures the core of classic competitive first-person shooters. You'll need to quickly coordinate strategies with your team on the fly, whilst keeping your movement nimble and your aim precise if you hope to beat out the competition. There are multiple game modes for you and your team to dive into. Test your skills in domination, capture the flag, or team deathmatch, and perfect your tactics in the highly competitive war type game mode. Face it's competitive toolset is fully integrated into the game, bringing world-renowned competitive matchmaking, 1v1s, tournaments, rankings, and leaderboards. Kill enemies, win matches, and rank up to demonstrate your Battalion 1944 prowess and unlock visual customization rewards. Each season will bring challenges for you to complete and medals to unlock, whilst tracking your in-game accomplishments and providing you with an easy way to compare them against your friends via in-game leaderboards. Halt the Axis Offensive in their tracks with the Rapid Fire PPSH or take fire with Pixel Precision with the Mosin Nagant and a whole host of new weapons just as deadly as their owners. With a range of environments to test your skills in and a variety of weapons at your disposal, play as a team and compete to be top of the leaderboards. Available now on Steam. That game looked like a much better competitive World War II shooter than I think Call of Duty WW2 has been able to pull off, than what Battlefield has been able to pull off. And look, and I love the battle. I, I love the recent multiplayer for the Battlefield games. Uh, in all honesty, I mean, you know, controversy around them be damned. I actually enjoyed the uh, enjoyed their multiplayer modes. This just looks like it actually found a way to do fast paced World War II style combat and still have it look right. I don't know something about the the Call of Duty or the the uh, Call of Duty WW2 when I when I watched its multiplayer mode it just never looked right to me. Um, that looked actually that looked damn good uh, in all honesty. Uh, actually, I, I, oddly enough, makes me want to play a, mul a, a multiplayer game. I, I usually do not care about multiplayer games. That one actually grabbed me and actually kind of made me want to play it. Got to give him some massive credit on that.
<laughs> That's cute. All right, finally, the one that I actually... All right, let's go. Let's see some DLC for, uh, for, for Kingdom Hearts 3. Okay. Interesting. Please welcome Naoki Yoshi. Uh, great. Um, to anybody watching this that enjoys Kingdom Hearts, uh, you know, the Kingdom Hearts, you know, I'm planning on playing through the entire franchise because, you know, I, I got the story so far uh, package and uh, I'm playing Kingdom Hearts 3 right now. If you want to see that DLC, remind me closer to, you know, when it actually comes out, remind me about that DLC and I will play it. I just, you know, like I said, I will probably forget about it by then, but eh. Cheetah, producer and director, Final Fantasy 14 Online. <laughs> All right, like the like the Bethesda conference. Um, if you know, it, uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna stand up, refill my drink, and um, you know, use the bathroom and everything, and I'll kind of let this play so you guys can watch this. I, I in all honesty, don't really care about. I just don't like MMOs. I generally, I'm just nah. My name is Naoki Yoshida, producer and director of Final Fantasy XIV. Today, I'm going to be a long time, but I'm going to be a long time for the 7th of the year of Final Fantasy XIV, the third part of the Final Fantasy XIV, the third part of the Final Fantasy XIV, the third part of the Final Fantasy XIV. So we'd like to take a little bit of your time to show off um, Shadowbringers Final Fantasy XIV's third expansion pack, which is releasing on July the 2nd. え、2013年に新生オルゼアアレルムリボーンが発売されてから、え、6年が経ちました。え、なんと世界で累計登録アカウント数1600万を突破し、え、なんとこのですね、漆黒のヴィランズの発売を前にして。有料会員数も過去最高を更新することができました。これらはすべて世界中のプレイヤー光の選手の皆さんのおかげです。この場を借りて改めてお礼申し上げます。it's been six years since the release of A Realm Reborn in 2013, and over the years, we've surpassed 16 million total registered users. Plus, we've reached the highest number of active subscribers in history, uh, in its history, before the launch of Shadowbringers. This is all thanks to our players, our warriors of light. <laughs> え、このシャドーブリンガーズではですね、拡張パッケージにとどまらない新作RPG1本分のボリュームとそしてゲーム体験をお届けしたいと思います。We view Shadowbringers as more than a simple expansion pack, but as a new game filled with new, uh, volume and gameplay experiences that are comparable to a brand new standalone RPG title. え、また新ジョブであるガンブレイカー、それから踊り子 新種族のロスガルとビエラなど、これからファイナルファンタシー14を始める皆さんにも多数の 
新規の要素が用意されています。And there's so many new elements in the game for those who have yet to play Final Fantasy XIV, including two new jobs, the Gunbreaker and the Dancer, as well as two new playable races, the Frothgar and the Viera. Please, Final Fantasy series の最新作として Final Fantasy VII Remake の発売2020年3月3日までの間、漆黒のヴィランズをお楽しみください。Excited to bring Shadowbringers as the latest installment in the Final Fantasy franchise for our fans to enjoy, at least until 2020, March 3rd, when Final Fantasy VII Remake comes out. So, it's going to be a long time to be able to get the launch of the Shikoku Villains launch trailer. We are pleased to bring a world premiere of the launch trailer for Shadowbringers. We are pleased to bring a world premiere. We are pleased to bring a world premiere of the launch trailer for Shadowbringers releasing on July the second. Please take a look. Eh. I said sorry. I just kind of, I just kind of bailed out there. It's just. Well, if it ain't the oldest joke in the book. And when, pray tell, did we last have a dark? You know, I, I. What Final Fantasy XIV? This is I I don't I don't know. This I I don't need Final Fantasy as an MMO. I just I just don't need that. In that chaotic no man's land between realms, time and space warp and blend in unexpected ways. What Orionge saw was the future. See, I don't even feel like this audience is too terribly into this. I mean, it's a small, it's a, it's a small auditorium, but still, I feel like the cheering should just be. Unless the the crowds are just quiet this year, it just it seems like all the way through E3 the the crowds have just been super dull. That's him. That's Volthri. Sin eaters are part of Yulmor society, but they must be fed with ether, living ether. Beyond saving, like those who try to save it, this world has had its fill of heroes. Can give him some points on the music, though. Sacrifice. The will of the star was made manifest. 
I'm sorry, I can only assume I misheard. But it sounded an awful lot like you were implying both Zodiac and Hydaelyn are not gods, but... They are gods after a fashion, yes. The eldest and most powerful of primals. All right. God damn, how much more of this is there? Holy crap. I, I, I've just, I, I've, I've found this, this conference so far to be really boring. Oh, that's cool. Uh, hanging out inside the man around the mannequins. God damn, I can't. I can't wait for this, man. I I loved the original Dying Light. I I can't wait to see what this one's gonna be. I'm hoping the human AI is a little smarter, but. But I, I, I think the coolest thing about this one is going to be the fact that there's actually a, like, like, it, 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 like existing factions of human be, uh, you know, people. There's actually, um, there's actually a, a, a sort of society out there in this game. That's it, really? All right. But no, I, I I really like that that it looks like there's like an actual like society sort of thing building in uh, Dying Light Two that it that it looks like it's going to be more than just an out and out action survival game. I mean, it's going to be the core, obviously, but it, that there's going to be something a little bit a little bit more meaty to it. No clue. Never heard of it. Oh, the one on the left is coming to the Vita. So you know, for all of those of us who own, who already own Vitas, what they they aren't making any more of those, aren't they? They've they've completely stopped production of those. So you have to get a get a secondhand Vita if you want to play it. Brave Exvius, enjoyed by fans the world over, has surpassed 39 million downloads. Now, Square Enix proudly presents the international reveal of a new title born from the FFBE universe. War of the Visions, Final Fantasy, Brave Exvius. These two titles, FFBE and War of the Visions, will be the pillars of the growing world of Lapis. Okay, how many... A continent of Lapis. 
A tiny spark here ignites the flames that would embroil the entire continent. In how many games at the or how how much of the Square Enix conference has been filled with stuff that is related to or directly about Final Fantasy? Is that all they've got this year? <laughs> I mean, how I'm just honestly the the last thing I'm sitting here waiting for is the Avengers stuff. As the War of the Visions. by the Red Lion Monarch possesses the power of visions as well as twin princes. Horn, the great western kingdom governed by a policy of peace and its brave and wise king. Fenis, where the king of the savages has organized the barbarian tribes into Ardura's mightiest militant state. Was it the great eastern kingdom over which reigns its icy despot? Crystal Sanctum, a religious city state with believers throughout Ardra, founded by one who claims to be God. And his Pope hat. Each burden with its own dignity. Thus is the curtain drawn on a struggle in which the fate of nations rests. is for one's homeland. War of the Visions, Final Fantasy, Brave Exvius. Now in development. I, I don't know. I mean, it looks, it looks interesting. I mean, it's going to be a phone game. I, I don't know. I, I just... I don't play... Oh, interesting. So, uh, People Can Fly, I believe, is the studio. Yeah. I don't know, man. I just I, I have not been playing a lot of games on my phone recently, and I've got some some good ones. I've just not. It's just I don't know. I just haven't had the had the interest. What is this? Not sure what the hell that is, but I'm in. People can fly. I mean, I, I think they made two great shooters in the in the form of Judgment and uh, Bullet Storm. Honestly, the game looks dope. I don't know what the hell it's about. I mean, it's got, it looks like it's something about aliens and demons or something. I don't. Know. It looks cool. I'm in. Please welcome Sebastian Wojciechowski, Studio Head. People That's a name. All right. So I have the, so I have the video volume is so low. I keep I keep turning over to my uh, to my software and the the video volume isn't going that loud. I it, it's just I, I've got everything turned up as loud as I can and. I don't want to really crank up the stuff in my software just so I mess up everything because I'll forget to change it. But yeah, I I, I I can't do much about it. It's just a quiet stream, I guess. Studio head of People Can Fly, the studio behind Bulletstorm and Gears of War Judgment. Yeah, any Bulletstorm I love how I love, I love how Gears of War Judgment well, doesn't get a doesn't get a cheer. Great to be here and feels amazing to be able to finally announce Outriders. Um, I don't get why Bulletstorm doesn't get a cheer though. I think that game that game's severely underrated. People can fly. You guys are amazing, and I know that some of you are watching this live, even though it's 4 a.m. in the morning in Poland. So make a noise for them, please. Thank you. Oh, that guy in the hat was just like, "Yeah, all right." 
support as we work together on this exciting new IP. You know, over the past few years, People Can Fly has grown to over 200 developers and four studios across Poland, the UK, and most recently, the US, to bring you what is our most ambitious shooter to date. To present more, <laughs> to present more of our vision, I would like to take this moment to introduce a short video from our game director, Bartik Mita. So thanks a lot. More on Outriders this winter. Thank you. Shooters are in our DNA. It's our passion, and it's what we do. Outriders draws on all our experience from all our previous titles. It's a game we wanted to make for a very long time. We describe Outriders as a dark, modern shooter built with traditional values. By that, I mean we are creating an experience with a strong story that you can enjoy with your friends or on your own. We want to tell a complete story. We are confident we are building a shooter with a powerful gunplay, incredible weaponry, and a hostile new world we want to spend many hours in. It's, it's a game we've had in our heads ever since People Can Fly left Epic Games. Outriders is a 1, 2 or 3 player, drop in, drop out, co op shooter. In our game, you will create your own Outrider and journey across the hostile planet of Enoch in search of the source of a mysterious signal. It's, it's a pretty dark and unforgiving world, and yes, there is a lot more depth to the game, but I can't say it too much more right now. Uh, they they just lost me a little bit. They, they won me over with that trailer and then just said multiplayer shooter and my brain just went, all right, and I just lost interest. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll reserve judgment until I see more of it. I, it looks good. It looks cool. Um, if they, I mean, the Division 2, I guess, is, again, what I keep going back to is you should be saying that's the... That's the game that's really kind of pushed me that, come on, all multiplayer shooters aren't bad. Um, but, I mean, hopefully it's more Division 2 than it is Anthem. So, I'll I'll reserve judgment. It's the foundation of our way of life. We celebrate the lives we've been given and offer up prayers for the next. It is grief of death which shackles the living and causes the dead to stray. Indeed... There is no greater affront to reincarnation. So we turn our grief to joy as we send off the dead. But the souls of those who held back their tears in life still need salvation in death. A duty that falls to the Watchers. The Watchers sever the bonds that tie the lost to this world and send them off to the next. They navigate the emotions of the living and the dead. They prize life above all else. This is the story of one watcher.
I had more Final Fantasy stuff. I joke, but you know what? I'm seeing turn-based action for a Final Fantasy game. Actually, I'm, I might give it a shot. <laughs> Again, though, it feels like every third game has something to do with Final Fantasy. I'm just saying. All right, I think we're finally into, like, the last game. All right, look, I, I've said this. I am not a ma I am not a massive. I, look, if I had to pick between Marvel or DC, I pick Marvel. But in all honesty, as far as the movies go, I really don't give two craps anymore. It's just to me, it's it's felt like homework, and just it's it's been a pain in the ass to watch them. So I'm just I, I've completely given up on comic book movies. Um, and even then, comic book game or you know hero games or whatever just haven't really been gra have never really grabbed me. Granted, I am going to play Marvel Ultimate Alliance next month, but that's beside the point. This just the fact that this game is being done with in collaboration with Eidos and um, Crystal Dynamics, I gotta, I, I immediately makes me go, okay, this could be really good. Just the fact, again, it's like I said, Crystal Dynamics, massively uh, famous because of the, uh, the the Tomb Raider trilogy. Granted, I think the last one was still a bit of a, it was was really shaky compared to the first two, but. I digress. Uh, in Eidos with the uh, Deus Ex games, I I, I really have uh, high hopes for this. In all honesty, and like I said, that comes from a person who's really not a fan of modern Marvel or comic books or the the comic book movies or whatever. So that that I, I feel like that should say something. The voices sound super quiet to everyone. I can't hear shit. Avengers pose a danger to society. That was the question, Bruce. That was the question. Well, we all lost something. 
that day. But that's not how this story ends. That game looks pretty cool. I, it looks like more, uh, very much like a straightforward action game. Nothing wrong with that. What are we waiting for? Yet I feel I feel it's weird that that almost sounds like it's in complete um, disagreement with what I said earlier about Final Fantasy VII. Sean Eskai created. There's nothing wrong with Final Fantasy being an action game, just like there's nothing wrong with this being an action game. It's just Final Fantasy, I know, is just a very good turn-based series, and it's just sad to see them go full-on action title. That's that's what I'm getting at, but no. Uh, no, I, I, I really don't know what you're going to do with this. I mean, it doesn't... I, it it kind of looks like this is Crystal Dynamics and Eidos trying to recreate um, what Rocksteady did with Batman. Just, I, I feel like this is going to be a superhero action game, and I'm just going to go, okay, it's going to be cool. It, it'll probably be fun. I just, meh. Creative Director, Crystal Dynamics, and Bill Roseman, Vice President and Creative Director, Marvel Games. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. We love you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We are incredibly excited to reveal Marvel's Avengers to the world. A few years ago, Crystal Dynamics and Marvel began collaborating on an original Avengers game, one that combined epic action adventure with cinematic storytelling. A game where we as players can experience in both single player and co op. Oh, like God. Earth's mightiest heroes. Do I have any true believers in the house? <coughs> yes! Awesome. Because you will instantly recognize your favorite superheroes and villains, but you'll also see that they're unique to this game, as this is Crystal's interpretation of these iconic characters. Our story begins at A-Day, as San Francisco celebrates the opening of the Avengers West Coast headquarters. And the team... You know, you know I, do, I do have to correct something I did say earlier. I did say that the superhero games have never really grabbed me, and I've not, I, I do want to make two exceptions. Uh, the, the, the Rocksteady Arkham games, those were really good, and the most recent Spider-Man game. I, I, will, I will throw a bone to those. Those games were great. Team's custom helicarrier outfitted with a strange experimental energy source. However, the day turns deadly when an attempt to steal this new technology results in massive destruction. Blamed for the tragedy, the Avengers are outlawed and our heroes disband. Five years later, a horrific evil threatens the world. And our only hope is to reassemble Earth's mightiest heroes. You'll play as your favorite Avengers in an all-new original story showcasing authentic Marvel heroism and humanity. It's about losing what matters to you most and fighting to get it back. Yeah! Yeah! Most importantly, this is a story about self-acceptance in the face of adversity, about embracing our individual powers and learning that together we are mighty. Yeah, but you're trying to sell me that Black Widow is that great. Look, everyone loves Black Widow, and you know I'll throw Hawkeye in that same situation. Look, Black Widow and Hawkeye, sure, they're great on their own, but when you throw them into connection to the guy with the super mechanical suit a Norse god, the the Hulk, and Captain America. I think they fall short. I'm gonna be entirely honest. I've always thought that. I I just I've I, look and I and I loved I, I Scarlett Johansson. 
playing uh, Black Widow, and I always forget his name, the guy who plays Hawkeye. Love him. Fantastic characters in the movies. Because I actually, I, I was still watching um, the Marvel movies, you know, back when back I went, from what I remember. They were great in those as those characters. But still, at the end of the day, I've always kind of felt that the Avengers is a four-man team, not six. Let's be honest. Team. Also, how come Hawkeye's not up there? If, if you're going to include Black Widow, you got to include Hawkeye. At least throw him that bone. I'm just saying. As a legendary super soldier, Captain America. Yeah! You'll call down the lightning as the Asgardian god of thunder, Thor. Yeah! You'll channel the anger of scientist Bruce Banner by unleashing the Hulk. Yeah! All right, dude, you can pull it back about 10%. And strike swiftly as the ultimate tactical spy, Black Widow. And finally, you'll blast through the sky as a charismatic Tony Stark. No yeah, that's if if I can pick who I want to play the game through as, it'd be it'd be Iron Man. To bring this incredible story to life, we've assembled an all-star cast. I'll let them introduce themselves. So, here we are, Avengers Assembled. Who are you people again? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Troy Baker, and I play Bruce Banner. Hi, I'm Jeff Schoen, All right. and I play Captain America. Hi, I'm Travis Willingham, and I play Thor. Hi, I'm Laura Bailey, and I'm playing Black Widow. Hi, I'm Nolan North, and I play Tony Stark. There's yes, one best one. Have to be, uh... Okay, look, let's be honest. There's only four actors here because I stand by that Troy Baker and Nolan North are basically the same person. But still, the I I my probably my favorite voice actor is playing my favorite character in this game. I'm I'm excited. Talked into? Yeah. You know, so we'd like to have you play. Oh, sorry, I just stepped on my dog's yes. foot. <laughs> Sitting under my foot, and it's not a good place to sit. You know, everybody always portrays him as this super confident character, and I think it's a mask for for him. I think he's a, one of the most vulnerable guys. I think Bruce is just such a cool character. A lot of people are, are really quick to, to bring out the big green, but I think that that Bruce is a super complex character. He's fun, and I've never played him before. What is very relatable about Natasha is she's extremely capable, but she's at the core, she's human. She's what? surrounded by all of this larger-than-life stuff, and she has to step up to it. I, I feel like Thor got really interesting in the last like 10 or 15 years. From, for me, I, I like where he's kind of landed in the, the public eye, you know. One of the things I think is cool about Cap is I never feel like he, uh, he necessarily wants to be a leader. He accepts that he is. I feel like sometimes the best leaders are the ones who don't necessarily want to be, but they're right for the job. Having an original story to tell as well, what they've done at Crystal Dynamics is great, so I think everybody's going to be pretty stoked. The Avengers are at their best when they are all together. But the chemistry is... <laughs> Do not shake. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Can't wait for you to be able to play the game. Troy Baker, I hate your hat. You don't have to wait for some exclusive content. Do the Avengers pose a danger to society? That was the question, Bruce. That was the question. How did I not pick up that that was Nolan North? It was a heist, Bruce. No. We were outsmarted. No. The Terrigen reactor was unstable, and you knew that. You knew that, and you still paraded it before the entire world. So what? We just give up? We didn't give up, Tony. We failed. At least I can admit that. No. No, we failed him. We failed him. How did that pick up that that was Nolan North? I I love Nolan. Scott Amos, head of studio, and Megan Marie, senior community and social media manager, Crystal Dynamics. I I love Nolan North. Yeah, every time I I for some reason he doesn't even really hide his voice. I'm like, oh, that character sounds a lot like Nathan Drake. Oh, of course it sounds like Nathan Drake because that's Nolan North. <laughs> it just for some reason I never catch that it's Nolan North. It's like a pleasant surprise. ...of the cinematic and character-driven campaign of Marvel's Avengers. 
But launch is only the beginning of this adventure. Marvel's Avengers delivers a narrative over multiple years with exciting new content released at a regular basis. Like the Avengers, you and your friends are stronger together. You'll assemble into teams of up to four players online where you can master extraordinary abilities, where you can customize a growing roster of heroes and defend the Earth from ever escalating threats. Oh yes, oh yes. And to make sure everyone comes on this journey with us, we're incredibly thrilled to announce that every new superhero and every new region will be delivered at no additional cost. Oh yeah. <laughs> so our promise to the community is that we won't have random loot boxes or pay to win scenarios. Yeah. This game represents a collaboration across Crystal Dynamics, Marvel Games, I know you're out here, <laughs> IDOS Montreal, these guys are here, Nixie Software, our new Crystal Northwest studio, and everyone at Square Enix. So our game is about embracing your powers and living your superhero dreams. We have an exclusive gameplay demo in our booth that will show you more of the core campaign, its original story, and our superheroes in action. So Marvel's Avengers will release worldwide on PS4, Xbox One, Stadia, and PC. We got you covered. <laughs> and we're excited to be partnering with PlayStation to bring some awesome surprises to the PlayStation audience. <laughs> including early beta access <laughs> and unique benefits that we'll be revealing in the future. <laughs> but before we go, we have one final glimpse into our world including when you'll get to play this game. <laughs> this is what's next for the Avengers. Thank you, true believers. You know, I, you know, I, I, I get that this game, ha that they have to push the co-op aspect of this game because, you know, it's the Avengers, it's a four-man team, or five if you include Black Widow, but... Hank, that doesn't look ready. Come on, Tony, live a little. All right. Unbelievable. It worked. It's sort of cute when they're small. Ah, I didn't doubt you for a second, Hank. Okay. I mean, I, I, just, just the way that they were talking about the multiplayer, they were just kind of pushing that multiplayer. Again, I get that that has to be a part of the game because, again, it, it, the Avengers is a group, not a singular individual. It's just something about it just always was... I was sitting there listening to that going, I, I got a bad feeling about this, that they're going to turn this into like a pseudo-MMO. It's going to be a, a, it just something that you have to play with a group or whatever. It just I, I don't know, man. Something about it's just not sitting right with me. I mean, it looks cool, but something about that game just didn't sit right with me. Um, overall, this conference... I really, just this year's E3, in general, uh, I think was really flat. Um, it just, there there wasn't a lot of big... It weren't a lot of big surprises. I mean, Keanu Reeves being at... Um, what was I saying? Uh, Keanu Reeves being over with... Uh, uh, Cyberpunk, you know, we got we got the release date for Cyberpunk, which was actually almost exactly where I thought that release date was going to be. I mean, we, you know, we got we got some cool stuff at Microsoft, we got some cool stuff at UB, got a, some cool stuff here. Um, I, honestly, my game of the show, I, I stand by my game of the show was um, Watch Dogs Legion. I think that was the coolest game that I think that uh, that we saw. Um, but overall, I just this year's E3 was just really bland to me. It just seems like the crowds weren't really into it. It just, it, I don't think feel like the games that they were shown um, was were that great. Uh, just overall, I think that this E3 as a whole was um, 
and now that I'm done with pretty much all the the press conferences I'm going to cover, uh, this E3 as a whole, the I I just feel that it, it, this is one of the worst E3s that I think I've seen in uh, in a, in, a, in a long while. Um, and that's kind of sad to me because as as much as I love E3, but uh, I don't know. Uh, we still got some gameplay videos um, that even though it's it's late today, I, I I tried to take you know like a short like one hour power nap that turned into like a four or five hour nap. Um, in the middle of the day, so uh, it, it just still expect just more gameplay videos because I mean uh, I still got some I still want to look at some stuff from the Nintendo conference. You know, definitely want to take a look at Astral Chain. Want to take a look at Pokemon. Uh, I think Destroy All Humans had some gameplay. Control had some gameplay. There's still some uh, some stuff that was shown here uh, at E3 that I want to show. Um, I'm probably not going to take a look at anything of EA just because, in all honesty, now that I really if I really think about it. Nothing really grabbed me at EA, from EA's what they were really talking about. So, uh, either way, if, if you have any suggestions of things to take a look at, things to cover or whatever, please put links down in the description um, or down, uh, excuse me, down in the comments. A link to this video will be in the description. There you go. You can also tweet me links, uh, anything like that. That hey, here's something that maybe you might have missed or whatever. But uh, yeah, expect the next couple of days to see another one or uh, another uh, some more gameplay videos. So uh, either way, there we go. There's Square Enix conference. Uh, hope you enjoyed it, guys. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel and all that. Uh, it really means a lot to me. Um, social media, all the links to that are in the description. Those kind of link you to everything I do. Uh, the written stuff over on the website, even though I haven't done a lot of written. I really haven't done written stuff uh, probably in the last like six, seven months. Um, some of that reason is personal. Um, it just, I, I don't know. I'm, I really want to try and get back into that. Um, and then all the other social media platforms, uh, Twitter is probably the go-to if you want to get channel updates as in, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm stuck at work. I'm doing this, that, the other thing. Um, you know, maybe I'm taking a day off or I'm doing whatever, uh, stuff like that goes up on Twitter. So if you're interested in keeping up on everything like that, go, please go follow me on Twitter. Uh, other than that, like, comment, you're not already, please subscribe to the channel, and if you are subscribed or will subscribe at the end of this, please remember to hit that little bell icon next to the subscribe button. It uh, notifies you when I put up videos, and it really kind of helps um, keep everything keeps everything rolling. So uh, other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Facebook, Twitter, the website, Minds.com. I already said all that shit. Thanks for watching. My name's H.A. Gels. This is the Game Channel. I'll leave you alone. I'm out.